sad as it is a little bit, um, that little boy um, that I gave birth to is just, you know, just gone. And it, it's kind of sad if I think about it that way. Is that how you feel? Like gone? Um, yeah. You know? Oh my God, don't make me email. I don't want to... I cry enough on YouTube and in front of people. I can't. Hey guys, welcome back to my second channel. I am normally Blair White, and today, of course, I am Blair Black. Make sure you subscribe to both. So today is actually a kind of a landmark video because you guys know I've never had my family on camera. No one's ever really seen my mom. Um, and today I'm actually going to FaceTime or Skype my mom and have her come in, and we're going to talk about my coming out story. Especially in the last year, I have amassed a lot of really young followers who, you know, are trying to figure out how to come out. Not that it's only a young person's problem. I know there's older people as well. And really make that step with their family and just letting their family know who they are. And um, I'm going to include as many tips as well as just my story as I can in this video. So let's get into it. So my coming out story is a little bit non-conventional because I did it over the phone with my mom. Not sure I recommend that. Probably more of a face-to-face -face thing. But the reason I did it was because I actually had moved to Michigan at the age of 19 to be with a boy. Obviously, that relationship didn't work out. And when I was living in Michigan, all my gender dysphoria that I had experienced from age five and on had come to a really, really awful head. It was the lowest point in my life, so much darkness. I cannot describe a more depressing and sad time than living in Michigan and feeling so disconnected from my family and my friends. And I had always known there was something different about me, but it wasn't until I was living on my own as an adult that I was able to really see that it was me being transgender. Basically, I was still going by my birth name and by male pronouns, but I'd go out into the world and I don't know what it is, but for some reason, everyone would still call me she and refer to me as a girl, like strangers, cash register people, um, people on the street would still say she and her. I think it's maybe it's because Michigan people there aren't as used to seeing maybe like feminine males, which I technically was at the time, but I was presenting in a way that was, you know, I had makeup and long hair and whatever. And even though I had not transitioned obviously yet, it wasn't even on my to-do list, people were still calling me by she and her. And it was super, super confusing for me because it felt good, it felt right. It felt like for the first time in my life, I was being addressed properly, even though technically I wasn't. So that really validated to me that the way I was most comfortable in this life was going through this world, being recognized as female and all the pain and the mental distress I had gone through my entire life made so much sense because it was partially going away just by having people refer to me as a girl on the street. So I realized the relationship was far from the right relationship for me. I realized I had to do something about this. I had to get my life started and I had to transition. So I called my mom and I spilled my guts and you know what, let's just call my mom right now and get her take on it. Hi hon, how are you? Good, okay, so this is a monumental moment. Okay. This is I'm you. Nervous. I'm nervous. You're nervous, okay. <laughs> Because I have never shown my family on camera before for a few reasons, just very private. Everybody. So today we're going to talk about the time I came out to you over the phone and some other stuff. Because I thought it'd be okay. funny because it happened so long ago that our stories might not match. It might be kind of funny. Right. So I came out to you when I was living in Michigan and not the right relationship unhappy super depressed and do you remember like me calling you and having that whole conversation oh, yeah i remember i remember that phone call well well i was shocked um but almost a little bit relieved that we finally had like a name um but it, my shock was probably mostly because i just didn't know really right. what even that meant you know it was a new topic for you yeah yeah i didn't really even understand it other than i knew from you know, your, our conversation, because you just shot from the heart um, that this was, this was what was going on. So at least we had a direction, you know? Yeah. And the way you reacted was very like, okay, so then what's the move then? Like, how do we make this happen? Like, how do we get you on hormones? Do you, like, do you want surgery? Like, it, it was very like reactionary in a good way. Like you were like, okay, let's go then. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember that, you know, you, your, your conversation you were just shooting from the heart. Um, I remember I didn't interrupt you at all. And when you were done talking, I knew that you knew um, that you had to do this. And um, there was no trying to talk you out of it or trying to um, say, wait, um, you know. That's how I've always been, though. Like, when I think something, yeah. I think it. When I want to do something, I want to do it, always. Yeah, pretty, pretty headstrong. <laughs> yeah, I felt like we butted heads a lot, like, 
growing up living with you because we're both very headstrong. You're, you know, I was about to say you're a Scorpio. I don't even believe in astrology like that, but like yeah. if it's real, you're that. Yeah, we're 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 very different, you and I, right? right? We're very different, but we're similar in a lot of ways too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we what, know what we know those topics that we don't talk about. There's certain ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> Politics we don't talk about. Yeah, no, we don't talk. About but that, yeah. when it comes to well, religion. Yeah, or religion. But when it came down to actually coming out, like, you were super supportive, which a lot of people don't have that, you know what I mean? Um, I remember going to, like, trans meetings with you with, like, other kids, and, like, they would talk about how they don't have families supportive like that, you know? Um, I remember the first meeting that we walked out of that you went with me, um, because I went to one or two without you. And then you, I finally talked to you in the going one. Um, I remember you walking out just crying, telling me, you were actually thanking me because you saw that the difference, you said that you could be them, you know, if you didn't have the yeah. support, you know, you know. Yeah, I, I could have been, you know, one of these people that doesn't have any family in their corner. And, and, and I've talked before about like my dad's side, like they're not supportive, but you know, I've been really lucky to have like the other side and you that are. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it really does make a big difference. What would you say are like the tips, like coming from a parent, like, I always say it's very important to give parents time to adjust. Because remember, you had a really hard time in the beginning with pronouns and, like, calling me she and calling me Blair when I ultimately decided that was going to be my new name. Like, you really struggled with it. Not intentionally to be hurtful, but yeah, it was hard. Yeah, yeah, It was hard. It was hard. I remember you um, You gave me time. Um, after I, I don't know if this was after you transitioned, but you gave me a certain amount of time um, um, to not do that. But I, I definitely went over. And I remember after a while, though, it just got to be where it was causing you so much pain. And um, you, you, we were we were at a, a department store once, and that happened. And I remember calling you that in front of the, the, um, the worker there. The situation was that um, you had said, like, something to the um, employee in this clothing store, like, oh, he's over there in the dressing room. And she looked and saw me. And I was still presenting similar to this. So she didn't understand why you said he. And I was like yeah. so mortified. I was like, oh my God. And looking back, it's yeah. so crazy because that kind of stuff, it's just so far in the past. Like you haven't called me he or by my birth name in years. Like it doesn't even yeah. cross your yeah. mind. Sad as it is a little bit, um, that little boy um, that I gave birth to is just, you know, just gone. And it, it's kind of sad if I think about it that way. Is that how you yeah. feel? Like gone? Um yeah yeah that's exactly, really? exactly yeah yeah oh my God. yeah, I... yeah. And, and it saying it out loud makes me kind of sad but at the same time it's like you know i have a beautiful intelligent daughter that is happy and you know really that's all that all we can ask for as parents you know? oh my god don't make me email i don't want to i cry enough yeah. on youtube and in front of people i can't that's crazy i didn't know you felt like that honestly i didn't know you felt like yeah. like that person, you know, that you gave birth to was just like gone. I didn't know you felt because oh. to me, yeah, to me, you know, I talked about it before with my supporters, but I experienced gender dysphoria and feeling weird about, you know, being a boy when I was like in preschool, like down to that young, which makes me feel like, you know, it's something you're born with. But um, yeah. I've always felt like this was just like the conclusion, the ultimate conclusion of how it was going to end up. Whether I knew it consciously or not, that it meant like being transgender. I never saw myself as being able to grow up and be like, like dad. I always saw myself growing up and being like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we have to talk about how I only came out to you. You're the only person in the family I ever came out to. But everyone mm -hmm. else found out because you told everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, I have like a big family. and But you know what? Looking back, like that's a good thing. Because imagine having that conversation with every cousin and every aunt and uncle right. and it, right. it was a good thing yeah do you think people and, in our family really, huh? yeah. i was saying really as far as the parents it wasn't a shock because you were already looking you know mm -hmm. um, like this other than before your surgeries but you were already with the long hair and the makeup and stuff so that wasn't the hard part i, I think it was just the the pronouns in you know um, yeah because it's like part. you know i was 20 when i medically started my transition and like you just have to understand, like, you, you raise someone for 20 years with a different name and a different pronoun and a different identity. Yeah. It's like, it's not going to be overnight. And I think a lot of trans people are really hard on their families about that. And I remember be, being very frustrated. But
But looking back, I think it's important to say just to be patient. And, like, I think it's also important. Another tip is, like, when I came out to you, I was very confident in it. Like, I knew what I knew. I knew what I had to do. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like if you're insecure in what you're saying, it'll make your family insecure and feel like you're confused. And that's one of the things, like, you know, you have to come across as being sure. Yeah. Well, you definitely were. I remember that conversation from Michigan when you told me um, you just shot from the heart. And when you were done, it's all I could do is say, well, then how do we do this? You know, um, there was no talking you out of anything because you knew. Um, mm-hmm. And I knew that you had already done research and you already had a lot of answers. And um, so it was just a, a formality, I guess. To, but it was a starting yeah. point anyway, because um, you had never really, that was the first time you said it. So I came out to you as trans at 19. But do you remember when I was like 13, 14, 15, like, you would try to get certain answers out of me because you've always known I was different. Like, you would ask me, like, I remember one time I was mortified. We were at um, the cabin, and you were like, so do you like boys or girls or both? Because you were just trying to figure it out. Well, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's definitely important to, um, to me, uh, your happiness is the most important thing, no matter what you look like, no matter yeah. who you are, you know? Um, and I remember those uh, meetings that we went to, sitting around the table with like with about seven or eight other um, transgender kids, all young, and every one of them was so broken. Um, yeah. They were, yeah, that wanted to just come back from the hospital from having a suicide. A lot of them were homeless. And I remember just breaking my heart, um, not understanding how those parents could, um, just abandon them on their child and abandon them. Yeah. Abandon them. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel very lucky that obviously that didn't happen to me. Um, but I will also say, you know, this might not be the answer everyone wants to hear, but I would say to young people who are thinking of coming out to family who are in a bad situation and they may get disowned or kicked out onto the street, maybe hold off on coming out. Like if you know that's what's going to be the reaction, maybe wait until you are an adult and you are, you know, self-sufficient and you'll be okay because not everyone's going to be like you that's going to be like, okay, let me help you. It'll be the opposite. Right. And you don't want to be homeless. You don't want to, you know, um, yeah, it's, um, it's heartbreaking. Um, yeah. How many, how many kids that happens to where the parents just can't accept them for who they are. And, you know, yeah. so since you've never been on my YouTube channel before and never been able to like speak to my supporters, what would you say about like, just like this craziness, like what my life has become. It's so crazy. Like, what is it like for you just like seeing all this shit? Cause you've been to like my speaking events with people trying to like break down the doors and like go crazy. Right. right. Yeah. Th- you were about, let's see, gosh, when we used to go for walks, remember in the evenings? And I remember you telling me, um, mom, I don't know how, and I don't know when, but someday I'm going to be famous. You know, I said and, that. You um, said that to me. Yeah. How yeah. old was yeah. I? Like 13? Probably. Um, I know you're still in high school. Cool. That's so funny. Yeah. And I remember telling you that I knew that someday you were going to have a voice and people were going to listen to, you You know? Um, yeah. And um, so here you are now. And I, I sit here and I, sometimes I sit and think about what you were like when you were young, you know, didn't want to leave the house. You, you know, you were just so um, closed in and mm-hmm. um, um, it was you, when you were young, it was really painful for you um, to be you. You know, and then I see now that you're just so confident and you're doing what you do, and it and it, it blows me away. It's um, the opposite now. What's that? It's like the opposite now. Oh, it's completely opposite. From yeah, it's hard to believe that you were the same people. You know, um, you've definitely come a long way from um, who you used to be to now. And I know how much this means to you. Doing this, I know how much your supporters mean to you. Um, in fact mean everything I've, I've seen you break down in tears talking about um your subscribers to me and how much they mean to you and i know <laughs> yeah it's true and um i I've, I've seen you you know when you weren't doing so good and i um i see how much this, much love you get um and the hate too which i don't like um, <laughs> to stop <laughs> um gotta have that too, though. what's that gotta have that too though yeah you have a lot of that i see but um yeah i'm just real proud of you and um yeah i'm very proud of you thank you okay well thank you so much mom all right was it okay it was perfect Uh, it was perfect
make it so I look skinnier. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I will. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep in touch. Okay, love you, bye. Love you, love you, bye-bye. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this very personal story time because, you know, it's kind of rare that I really let people go this deep into my world, but if it helps someone out there, then it's all worth it. Love you guys. Make sure you guys subscribe to both my channels. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I love interacting with you guys on both of those platforms, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.